Welcome to the Christchurch United show with Daniel Main and Alistair McClay, where we talk about all things Christchurch United from the past month and look forward to what's happening in the next few weeks and months. Alistair, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show as well. Excited to be here. Yeah, it's our first show. Our first show. So we better make it a good one. Yeah. Yeah, but we've got a lot to talk about today. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to to go through all those all the all the things that have happened in the last month, and there's there's been lots. Um, and then yeah, we're just busy getting ready for the new season. So uh, looking forward to share with the audience what's coming up and and uh, what audience can look forward to uh, at United Sports Centre. Yeah, lots of exciting stuff going on. Mm, yeah, um, and also really really excited to um, be on Plains FM now. Um, yeah, we're really excited to uh, partner partner up with the radio sh um, station. Um, of course, a really good radio station for community talk back. Um, and so, yeah, we're really looking forward to, to getting our message out to even more people. Um, and of course, uh, our new show uh, being on the, the second Saturday every month, I believe, um, at 11.30 a.m. Um, so a really good time for all the families driving around with their, their kids into sports areas. So, uh, yeah, make sure you, you uh, tune in on those times because uh, we'll, we'll be in your car uh, talking about all things about football. Yeah, that's super exciting. Yeah. Um, and of course, we're going to be on uh, Spotify and our YouTube channel as well. So, uh, yeah, um, get used to us because we're going to be in a lot of different places. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so what's been happening in the last month at uh, Christchurch United, Daniel? So uh, we've got our registrations finally started. The, the players have been playing now since the end of January, which is super cool. A lot of the other clubs haven't started yet, but our boys have been training for about nearly two months now. Mm. So I think that's going to give them a really good head start going into the season in about April, May kind of time. Yeah, yeah, I think it's been really good to see the players come back so quickly after their kind of summer holidays and their Christmas break. Um, and I know a lot of the players here just want to get back and play football. They don't want to wait. Um, so have the, having the facilities open, having the coachings available. Um, and yeah, like you said, we're already kind of halfway through the term, which is, which is crazy. So um, yeah, when, uh, when term two starts and all the football uh, leagues start off, We'll be in a really good place. So uh, yeah, very good. And yeah, like I said, like the registrations are open for all of our programs. So um, yeah, come down and, and, and ask us for more information if you need. Yeah, I think it's been really cool to see a lot of registrations come through in our grassroots under four to under eight program. I think that program has been really growing yeah. over the last month or so. Yeah. yeah, it has. And we've got some some really good new kind of coaches helping us out. Um, we've got a lot of our existing players um, who've got um, loads of different experience. Uh, where they've played at youth level for Christchurch United or at first team. So, yeah, it gives a good little uh, dimension for those, um, you know, the, the little players, the younger players. Some of them are four years old, up to those eight years old. So uh, to look up to some of the players that have played in, in, in the bigger bigger leagues and the bigger games, I think it makes it really worthwhile. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to see that up and running. And, uh, yeah, I love it that it's, it's here every day as well. Um, now uh, come 4.30, um, you know, the kids kind of turn up and, and away he goes. It kicks off the nights really well. Yeah, and talking about those bigger players, well, I think it's been really exciting to see loads of players being called up to New Zealand national teams over the last month or so, Yeah, all the way through under 17, under 20 and under 23 level now. Oh, isn't it amazing? Like, you know, just such a good feel, good factor for one, the player getting called up to represent their country, but also as a club how we've helped facilitate um, getting that player there in any shape, way or form. Um, and I think not just one age group, but it's three age groups that we've managed to have some uh, that are current players or um, players that are graduates of ours get into those national teams. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really proud moment for the club. Um, and also just a, a, it's great to show that there is some good football pathways that we can we can open up potentially um and even better for the south island as well you know we've um we've done some research looking at previous um youth international clubs uh, sorry teams and um it means that the south island is well represented or well, it's actually represented at the same time as well so it's good that um we can kind of stick up for the island um, but also for our club at the same time yeah for sure we had four players uh past or or present in the under 17 squad we had four players past or present in the under 20 squad and we've had scott morris being called up to the under 23 squad as well just recently so that's super exciting it really shows a lot of consistency yeah throughout the age groups it really does and like as those players get called up they're not getting called up for the numbers you know they're actually getting minutes 
Yeah. Um, and, and it's exciting with, um, yeah, Nicholas Murphy and Jackson Cole, um, World Cup qualifiers in Fiji. Um, you know, both of them played a lot of minutes. They play, ended up playing quite a few games in the end. Um, and Nicholas Murphy even captained one of the games. Um, so brilliant for, for that kind of leadership qualities and to be part of the games properly rather than kind of you're in the squad just in case there's injuries but actually they were front and center of those selection process so amazed to see that um and even will pierce right i think he got um they only played three games in indonesia i believe so it's just a like a warm-up competition for uh, new zealand 20s but william got um a full 90 minutes out of that first game so um yeah great to see minutes coming in uh cats coming on as well um and like you said yeah scott morris those games aren't until the end of March, so hopefully in the next uh, next radio show podcast we'll talk about Scott Morris's um, games where they play China, I believe, uh, two games in New Zealand. So, yeah, great consistency, um, the caps, and um, it just, I think, for our younger academy players, um, it shows that it can be done, you know, um, and not every, everyone's journey is the same, um, and all these players play in different positions. You know, Scott's a goalkeeper. You know, um, the other boys are different divisions around the around the place. So it's great that they can see that. And then when these when these internationals come back, then I think it gives it extra information, um, motivation to go. Wow, if you can do it, I can do it as well. That's exactly right. Like yeah. if you're a young player at Christchurch United right now, I think you should be really motivated and excited seeing all these players make it through the academy. Yeah, make it through the first team and yeah. representing our country. Oh, totally. I think it's huge. It's really huge because you know, people. It, it's. I suppose when we have our younger age groups, they have coaches that could still be players. Or our younger age groups, when they come and watch our games, they love to see our players. And they love the club, but actually they love to see people who they've interacted with. And, you know, the, the four boys here that have represented only this year, they're all very personable. They know a lot of people around the, around the ground. And so I think if our younger players even went out and had a chat to them and go, how did you do that? You know, what was it like? though these internationals will give them a full account of what's happened so they don't hide behind you know a veil it's all there and open so yeah very exciting time and um you know we're only in march and we've got four call-ups already um and you know as we know there's there's lots more internationals coming up so it's gonna be quite exciting to see these these boys and extra extra players potentially um potentially get calls up for for new zealand um other teams as the year progresses yeah and beyond that we've got we had 10 players from the under 20s featuring our first team in our first preseason game against Kashmir Technical mm. just last week. Yeah. I think that's just really showing the next crop of players that might be making youth national teams and representing our first team as well. Oh, hugely, hugely. And of course, you know, international stage is the biggest stage, but you're right. Um, then when you look at um, domestically in the club level, I mean, our, our men's first team had a stellar last season, right? Like they did so well, you know, best we've had in, in 28, 30 years. Um, and then so to give opportunities for our, our young guy in the 20s to um, not only be in a squad, but again, get those those minutes um, against a very strong Kashmir technical side in a friendly um, just shows again the opportunities that are here. Um, and of course, you played in that game, right? Yeah, you, you played in it. So um, I know you've had some some first team action as well, but you scored a goal. So being a being an academy graduate and, and you've, you've gone through the process and then capping off of the goal, how does that feel being a, a graduate and doing that? Yeah, it's a good feeling scoring my first goal for the first team because that's something you look forward to as a goal. Going through the academy for mm. 10 years now, something you look forward to. Yeah. And it's a good feeling yeah. to see that work pay off. Awesome. And then how did the goal come about? Like, uh, Was it a good goal? Was it just uh, talk us through it? Yeah, so uh, uh, Cashman had the ball in their own half and we were pressing. Jackson Cole actually won the ball, wins it, plays it to Hugo and then uh, make a run. Call for the ball, yeah, give me the ball, and then got it on my left foot, take a touch, and put it in the bottom yeah. corner. And it was a left foot too as well, eh? Yeah. Ah, right. awesome, awesome. And how, so how did it feel? That goal went in the back of net, you've realised you scored a goal. What do you feel? Yeah, I just <laughs> go over and celebrate with the other boys from the academy, Mac yeah. and Hugo. Yeah. And there's a photo of us. Oh, cool. Little group hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to get the group hug in. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's important, right, is um, that, yes, you scored the goal, you got the... the the outcome, obviously scoring a goal, but actually bringing it back into the younger group that made it happen. And not even made it happen on that one moment to score, but actually it's the collective younger group who formed the majority of that team. It's like a, wow, like, here's the youth, you know, here's actually doing it against a, as a very good team. So I love that whole kind of unity feel, which is one of our values here, is the fact that, yes, one person could go on and do some great work, 
but actually you bring it back into your own environment and it's you, you celebrate as a team which is really cool yeah and we've all been training together for the last three four five years six years even yeah. some of us and like just seeing that moment celebrating that together awesome because we've all worked hard together yeah. to make it happen yeah but that's great and look hey look that's just the, the first game of the season right so um you know you've trained together six years pre-season started two months ago and the season's just about to begin which which we'll talk about later on with all the great games coming up um and it's not and you know as we go down the age groups um even our um, under 20s have played um i think they've played one pre-season game so far or maybe it's two um, but last week um, they played Hallswell uh, in another preseason friendly, um, and I believe that um, some under 15s actually featured. Which so even going back age groups, not just talking about senior football, you're talking about our kind of early stages of our academy, then highlighted in another 20s, which is almost senior football, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, and I believe we had we had three under 15s, um, and they were on the field at the same time in midfield. Um, and uh, one of them scored. One of them scored a goal, and he's only 13 years old. Yeah, it's incredible. Senna scored a nice volley. And it was a volley too. Yeah. Oh, love that. Love that. So, like, uh, it's amazing how there's so many, like, pathways leading up to, as we said at the start, international, but you work all the way back into a 13-year-old being in those kind of games. Like, it means that uh, younger players don't see it too much of a gap to go and play at the highest level they possibly can at that age you know they can start there and, and, and build up so um yeah it's, it's an exciting time to, for those areas and um the great thing is that every player that plays at Christchurch United has an opportunity you know it's not just one or two players that um there's so much combination of players being coached by different coaches or some players uh on training sessions training up training over across that you know you catch the coach's eye there's an opportunity right there. So it's great stuff. Um, and then, of course, we've got players that um, have played here in the past. You know, we're, we're super proud of our alumni here. You know, we've got many players that have kicked on in different places. Um, and we recently caught up with um, Diego Levin, um, who has been here for a while, hasn't he? Quite a few years yeah. previously. Um, and, you know, he'd, he'd experienced our whole academy. I think he experienced most of our pre-academy as well. Um, and he moved to Spain over Christmas time, I think it was, um, and now he's trying his hand at Spanish football. Um, and uh, some of the insights he was telling us just how different it really is, you know, how quick it is in Spanish football, how technically different it is. And then there's the language barriers as well. Um, and even the fact that he was talking about he speaks Spanish, but in football language is quite different. Um, so, yeah, Diego obviously gone off um, up to Spain looking for clubs in, in the second, third division, which is pretty high up. So really proud of Diego. Uh, and then we caught up with Jackson Brady as well, end of last year. Um, he'd played our, in our first team a few times, um, and now he's a professional in US system. Um, and he's just been signed up actually the last couple of weeks, um, which is great news. So it's good that we've got a, 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 the current crop of players, um, but o obviously we celebrate players that have been in the past. And I think that's important to um, not to forget those because you know, they've come here, they've experienced Christchurch United, uh, they've learned something, and then they're off doing, doing their own pathway, which, which is great news. So. Yeah, I think it's really exciting to see all the fruits of the labour starting to pay off now of the work that was laid about 10, 11 mm -hmm. years ago. Yeah. Now we're finally starting to see those results. Yeah. We're starting to see those first team yeah. debuts. We're starting to see players go overseas, yeah. get international minutes. Yeah. I think it's a really exciting time it's right now. Very exciting. If you think the reasons why the club exists, that's it, isn't it? Is to, is to have that conveyor belt of players, those ambitious players, to go off and go and do something. You know, go go make the best of what skills they've learned here and yeah like if you, you said 10 years ago where you know those players going on now were kind of eight years old in our grassroots program right now um it goes to show that uh, you know you come into the grassroots program and you follow the program through opportunities open up so it's great news so so yeah so lots i think if you if i kind of recap that the last month or two it's been great for pathways there's been so many things come out of board and it's very exciting when you get the, the selection process come up, whether it's club level, international level, and you go down the names and you can start picking them off. So I'm looking forward to the next month to see what else comes up. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, so what's currently happening at the moment? Um, you know, lots has happened in the past. Obviously, registration's open. Um, what's 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 happening in the next kind of wee while? Yeah, it's been really exciting to see a record number of registrations for our social leagues this term. 
Yeah. I think it's 32 teams cool. across our seven-a-side and five-a-side tournaments. And, uh, yeah, it's been really great to see everyone enjoying football. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's your first time playing football, you've played for years. Mm. It's really great to see all those players playing. So true. Yeah, it's so true. And it's, it's great that um, it fills such a good gap for those that are just wanting fitness after a big Christmas and New Year, or there might be players out there who are getting ready for a season. Um, but yeah, certainly um, it's great walking around and seeing the smiles on the faces. And there's been a tremendous amount of goals for, for all clubs, all little teams. Uh, so it's good they, they get to experience the, 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 the surface of the fields. They score some goals. They're happy. They go home. They get some fitness. Um, so yeah, it's great, great to see that. And um, I think those leagues finish in a, in a couple of weeks. I think we're about three or four weeks from the end. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing who the champions are uh, of, of summer summer leagues. Yeah, it's such a great community environment. Like There's so many players from different cultures coming together and it doesn't matter. Mm. And you just play together and it's amazing mm. to see. And it is very true. Yeah, there are. there's many teams out there from not just locally, but across Christchurch. Um, there's teams there that have played together for like eight years and there's brand new teams that they don't even know each other at the start of the game, uh, start, of the, start of the league. So it's great that they can just come in that they play the minutes and you know that they play some good minutes as well you know it's some it's some good kind of 20 25 minute halves so they get a good workout and of course it's competitive and social at the same time but at the end everyone hands shakes um it's done and dusted and uh, on to the next one so it's a great feeling great to have at the club yeah and i'm really excited for the next term of our social leagues moving on to the brand new mini pitches will launch on the 18th of march those mini pitches i mean they're something else um what a what a fantastic um facility uh not only to bring to um Christchurch United um but also the South Island you know it's, it's something that I don't believe is currently in the South Island at all um and you know they've been building it for for the last couple of weeks and uh it's getting to that stage where you can start seeing the structures go up um and these are two like fantastic fields you can play five aside on them six aside on them seven aside of them do one-on-ones on them. Um, you got some fantastic goals that you can get top corners into, um, and it's all going to be outdoors. Um, it's going to be netted, um, and you can play on them all year round, just like our eleven-side pitches. So, um, yeah, it's it's very very exciting to um, I suppose promote that and offer that to the community to carry on, almost like the five-a-side, seven-a-side summer leagues. Yeah, super exciting times. Mm. And of course, yeah, like you mentioned, that's that's been officially launched on the 18th of March, um, which is a very big day for the club and uh, the football community. Um, and that day is uh, we're going to uh, launch the inaugural Steve Sudner Cup. I mean, um, for me, that is it's fantastic. You know, it's obviously we love football and football is why we're here and it brings people together. Um, but the Steve Sudner Cup, it, lots of different elements are part of that. Um, and I think having many pitches as part, but of course, Steve Sumner, um, who those that don't know, um, Steve, um, is probably one of the most famous Kiwi footballers, I would say, um, I think in the, in the football communities, if you say Steve Sumner, 95% of people go, yes, I've heard the name or I know that person, or I've seen them play back in the day. Um, of course he played in the, the 1980s world cup, um, which was the first all whites, um, venture into world cup. Um, and of course, he has an affiliation, of course, with, with our club as well. Um, I think he ended up winning some national leagues with us at the same time. Um, and he's been around uh, the scene for a very long time. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, Steve died for uh, prostate cancer um, probably about five years ago now, I think, which was a huge loss to um, the football industry and scene in New Zealand because he gave so much. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was very fitting that um we did we, we were holding this steve summer cup on that saturday where we celebrate steve's life um and we also raise enough awareness for prostate cancer um which um talking to the foundation that are helping us push this i believe there's about four thousand men a year in new zealand alone get prostate cancer which is a huge amount if you think about it um and then i think about 700 actually die from it so it's one of those um it's one of those cancers that is kind of spoken about, but not really. Um, and I, I suppose being a guy, you don't really talk about it too, because it's not something you talk about, but in those numbers. So it's great that we uh, were able to, I suppose, have an event where we can really talk about it and, and push it. 
Um, and of course, um, we're going to be holding it alongside Cashmere Technical, um, who are actually one of our great rivals, of course. You know, we're, we're rivals on the pitch, um, but um, off the pitch, you know, we'll play football. Um, we're both big clubs. Um, we both want to serve the community and do the best we can. So it's fantastic that we've got them on board. Um, and then we're going to have four great matches, right? You want to talk about the, the matches that we've got involved? Yeah, so we're going to have four matches, the under-17s, the under-20s, the women's first team and the men's first team all playing on the Steve Sumner Cup day. And we're going to tally up the points across those four matches to decide the winner of the first ever Steve Sumner Cup. It's going to be good. And I think there's going to be some cracking games in there. You know, like those youth games, the senior games. So we're expecting a big crowd. Um, and, of course, we're going to be using both our pitches. Um, some of the game is going to be live on YouTube uh, and also live on both Christchurch United and uh, Cashmere Technical's Facebook pages as well. So for those that can't make it to the ground, there'll be some live streaming. But, of course, it'd be brilliant to see you all there um, because you get to see four great games in one day. Um, we get You get to... You know, we get to raise awareness for prostate cancer. Also, we get to grand launch the, the mini fields, mini pitches. So you get to experience that. Um, and of course, there's a bit of history on that day as well. Um, I believe it's nine years to date on Saturday, the 18th of March, 2014. Like what happened on that date? Uh, yeah, we launched the Christchurch Football Academy, the initial project out on the grass before we had the artificial pitches to develop world-class players out of Christchurch. And now you see a few of those players making national teams with a project that started back in 2014. Amazing. So it's a special day for everyone. Amazing. So jam-packed day, you know, and um, even better that it's the, it's the weekend before the first senior men's Southern League starts. So um, again, it buddies up for a really good pre-season match as well. So um, couldn't ask for much more really in one day. I don't think you can pack any much more into one day. Um, we'll have a, a cafe open here. We have food trucks. So it'll be really good. So yeah, very exciting. And um, of course, um, when we catch up again in a month's time, we'll give you a lowdown of who, wa who won yeah. and how the day goes as well. So yeah, it's going to be some cracking games. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, um, we've started up um, a school's partnership program as well. Um, you know, I absolutely love the facilities down here. They're really state of the art. Um, you know, you can play all year round. Um, and of course, the grounds are very busy in the evenings. Um, but in the days, not so busy because everyone's at work, everyone's at school. Um, and so it's quite, it's, it's amazing that um, we actually reached out to um, St. Thomas School. Um, which is just down the road uh, and we've started a, a school's partnership program so their um, their first 11 um, actually train on our pitch in the day on a Monday um, and they actually managed to build in uh, two hours worth of um, football here as part of their sports curriculum as well so um, it's great that we've managed to um, yeah work with, with a school um, that's very proactive and innovative that they, they want to use some facilities. It means the facilities are used in the day um, and it means that there's even more players who can play all year round um, and not worry about that weather that's going to probably hit us. Or it's, it's already hit us, hasn't it? But hit us later on in the year. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to working with more schools to, to really unlock the, the, the power of, um, of the facilities. Yeah, I think it's really good to see us doing more in the community now because mm. before we were sort of more focused on the, the high performance aspect and developing players, whereas now we've we got the social leagues mm. there, we're doing the Steve Sumner Cup, raising awareness for a good cause, mm. we're doing our schools program, mm. we've also gone out to the junior schools as well. Like, yep. It's good to see us doing more in the community now. Yeah, it really is because like, I see ourselves like, yes, we're a, we're a football club and you know we look for results and we look to develop our players. But ultimately, we're a facility at the same time as well. And so, yeah, having people come out here and use use us, whether it's um, expertise in our coaching as well, because sometimes we can give coaches out advice, but actually just having the community come here and experience it, it's, it's huge. It's huge. So, um, yeah, why not? Cool. So um, what's coming up? What, what have we got to look forward to? Apart from we've spoken about the Steve Sumner Cup. Um, obviously, we're, we're not on air for another four weeks. So what's going to hit us before April? Well, we've got the, the Southern League launching on the 25th of March, our first home game against Green Island. I think that's going to be huge. Yeah. And that's going to kick off a huge season. Yeah, it was Probably a good seven months of 
yeah. football every yeah. single week no no weekends off so no weekends. that's right it's exciting yeah even easter weekend we've got something on every on the friday there's stuff going on a sunday um so it feels like a long time ago now that last game of the southern league of course you know us winning it on the on the last couple of goals of the season um of course there the, the national league which was fantastic for again for us in the south island um but to kick it all off again um yeah i'm i'm really excited to to see teams back here uh whether it's a friday saturday or sunday um and of course yeah steve summer cup and then straight into it and a home game as well so yeah green island will be a, a good run for our money and then um i believe we've got coastal spirit um which is um a week after that um, always a good game that's away on the 2nd of april uh and then we've got dunedin city uh, another home game on the 7th of april uh, at 1 30. so yeah in the next uh, month we've got three games including the steve summer cup we've got four senior men's games coming in thick and fast so um we'll be well into this into the season when that happens yeah not only the men's team but uh we're really happy to announce uh tony gumley as the women's first team coach for this year yeah yeah, yeah, we do. So exciting um, sign in. Um, Tony was with us last year, um, assisting with the men's first team. Um, but yeah, Tony's got some fabulous experience previous to Christchurch United, especially in the female space. Um, so we're very lucky that he's agreed to to take on the women's first team. Of course, last year's women's um, one of their teams uh, we won the championship, right? Won the new new world championship. So um, it's exciting to have. Um, that team go forth um, and I believe uh, the format for the women's is uh, part of the it's like a southern league um, version first uh, and then it will go into like a, a WPL uh, after that so um, exciting to see how that team forms um, we'll get an interview with Tony I think in, in the next um, uh, radio show um, so yeah really good for our senior teams and also coming up we've got our holiday camps in April Super exciting. Last time we had so many kids down here. We have hundreds of registrations. Mm. It's really great to see a lot of those kids come down here and just enjoy the facilities, enjoy our coaching yeah. for six hours a day. I mean, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it goes back to that kind of community social element, right? It's just good seeing the, the, the smiles on the faces. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've run lots of camps in the past, but certainly the most recent one over Christmas and uh, towards the end of school holidays, like so many kids here, lots of kids and parents who have never even been here before. Um, and they're here just for fun. You know, they're here. Yes, there might be some learnings, but um, they love it. And uh, we've got some fabulous coaches who, who love taking the camps and that makes it really worthwhile. So, so yeah, um, we'll send out details soon. Um, so check our social media. Uh, on our Facebook, Instagram, um, and we'll put out details of what those camps look like. But uh, yeah, they'll be around for those two weeks over Easter. Awesome. I think that's all we've got for for this month's Crush It's United show. We'll see you back here next month. Yep. See you back next month. Uh, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, good to chat to you again, Daniel. And uh, yeah, good luck for the next couple of weeks if you start playing again. Sweet. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>